range script loaded, you can now press, escape, select choose slot and pick your aircraft. The Pucara has a built-in armament of 4 FN Browning 7.62mm single-barrel machine guns, mounted on the fuselage sides. Each has a 900-round magazine, a maximum rate of fire of 1,000 rounds per minute, and a maximum range of 1,800 meters. In addition, it carries two hispano suiza HS-804, 20mm cannons, taken from the retired fleet of Gloucester Meteor of the Argentinian Air Force, mounted ventrally, each with 270 rounds. They have a rate of fire of 700 rounds per minute and a maximum range of 4,000 meters. For this training mission, we will use a weapons range that uses objects created by the 476th Virtual Fighter Group, and a weapons range script developed by the user Suribob, that will allow you to gauge your accuracy and monitor your progress. On this mission, you will have to strafe three gun targets available on the eastern side of the range. Perform at least three passes over the strafing pits, one for each target. Perform the passes on a west-to-east general direction, so that the mission logic can keep track of them. You can make as many passes as you want, while you still have ammunition left. You can access the attack statistics calling up the F-10 option of the communications menu. Your aircraft is ready to start the flight, increase throttle and let the aircraft slowly move forward. Once the aircraft is moving, press the wheel brakes to confirm their operation. Release the wheel brakes and resume the taxi. Be careful of other traffic that may be near you. Good, now turn right and proceed along the taxiway, towards the runway. Stop just short of the We are now ready to take off, let's do a short checklist. 3. Wheel brakes. Keep the brakes applied until you have finished all checks. 4. Canopy. Check that it's locked, its enunciator should be off. 5. Flaps. On the real aircraft, the takeoff flaps is 12 degrees, but the simulator currently can have the flaps only full up or full down. Because of this, we will have the flaps on full down instead. Check that they are in fact fully extended. Six, pitch trim. Confirm it is set to zero degrees, as per the real aircraft. Seven, temperature gauges. Check they are within their normal green range. Eight, Pressure gauges. Check that they also are within their normal range. Once the pre-takeoff check are completed, we will begin the takeoff run. 1. Propeller pitch. Increase the pitch lever to its full forward position, for maximum power. 
2. Release the wheel brakes. The aircraft will begin its run. 3. Maintain the aircraft aligned with the runway, using the rudder. 4. Once the speed reaches 90 knots, pull smoothly the stick back to rotate. 5. On the air, use pitch trim to set the aircraft on the 10 degree ADI climb line. 5. Retract the landing gear. Don't exceed 150 knots with the gear down. 6. Retract the flaps. Don't exceed 140 knots with the flaps extended. 7. Adjust the pitch trim to set the aircraft on the 10 degree ADI climb line. Maintain a heading of 255 degrees to reach our first waypoint, just over the bridge at the town of Gur, Yak, ahead of us. You are over waypoint 1. Now, turn left towards Lago Bismarck, which is our waypoint 2, on a heading of 185 degrees. Maintain 250 knots and ascend to arrive at the next waypoint at 5,000 feet altitude. The procedure for using the cannons or machine guns, is as follows. 1. Master Arm Safety Switch. Set to its right position, armed. A green light above it illuminates. 2. Gun Sight Power. Set to on. Right click the ANT switch to its up position, to activate the gun sight. 3. Gun Sight Depression. Set. We don't have access to the gunnery tables of the real aircraft, so you will have to practice a bit to find a value that goes well with your gunnery style. We suggest a value of minus 25 for the cannon, and minus 35 for the machine guns, using a 15 to 20 degrees dive and a speed of 200 knots. 
4. Weapon Selector Knob. You can set it to either AMT for machine guns, or CAN for cannons. The AMS position on the real aircraft fires only the top two machine guns, but currently on the sim it still fires all four of them. Select the cannons position, as we will begin our training using these weapons first. Good, you have selected the cannons. Once you have run out of ammo, change over to the machine guns. It is important to note that the machine guns are fired by fully pressing the flight stick's trigger, while the cannons are fired by pressing the weapon release button. The weapons are now ready to use. Test the cannons by giving a short press on the weapon release button. Try it now. We have reached waypoint 2. Turn left to enter the weapons range on a easterly heading. The gun strafing pits are at the far side of the range. Select one of the three available pits and align to make a pass over it. Begin the dive, keeping the targeting reticle centered over the gun target. Wait until the sight center dot is over the desired target, then press on the stick either the gun trigger to fire the machine guns, or the weapon release to fire the cannons. Pull back on the stick to exit the dive and climb back up. Increase throttle. Good pass. If you still have ammo, turn right 180 degrees towards a westerly heading, and perform another pass. Start climbing back to at least 3000 feet, before attempting another pass.
Second pass. Turn back 180 degrees towards a west heading and perform another pass. Start climbing back to at least 3,000 feet before attempting another pass. Third pass. If your cannons are out of ammo, change to machine guns and do another pass. Start climbing back to at least 3,000 feet before attempting another pass. Good pass. If you still have ammo, turn back 180 degrees and perform another pass. If you are out of ammunition, then return to base on a heading of 045 degrees. The heading towards Rio Gallegos Air Base is approximately 045 degrees. Tune the VOR receiver to the Rio Gallegos VOR frequency of 116.7 MHz. Use the highlighted double concentric knob to select the frequency value. Next, enable the VOR navigation by setting the highlighted VOR switch to on. Good, now on the RMI gauge, 
The double needle is active and pointing towards the VOR station of our destination airbase. The runway at our airbase has a heading of 255 degrees, so turn the highlighted knob using the mouse wheel, until it is pointing at that heading. Be aware that the knob does not allow to turn from 0 to 359 degrees, so you have to turn the mouse wheel the other way around. Press spacebar once the single needle is pointing to 255 degrees. Keep your current heading of 045 degrees, until both needles of the RMI begin to superimpose each other, at which point you will turn left, towards the destination airbase. Deactivate the armament, with this procedure. 1. Master Arm Safety Switch. Set to its left position. The green light goes out. Two. Gun sight power. Set to off. Left click the ANT switch to its down position to deactivate the gun sight. Three. Weapon selector knob. Turn to the no position where no weapon is selected. You can check your range results, by calling up the communications menu. Select F10. Other. Then select F1. Range. Finally, click F1 again. My strafe results. Unfortunately, the Pucara and DCS can't communicate with the DC, so you must use the F-10 map to be aware of other air traffic that may be flying near Rio Gallegos. Press spacebar once you have checked the F-10 map. The two needles on the RMI gauge should be starting to superimpose each other. Just before the needles merge, turn the aircraft left, towards the airbase, until both needles point to the top of the RMI, its 12 o'clock position. Good, now our aircraft is pointing towards the destination airbase, the course should be around 255 degrees. Perform a descent towards the airbase. Reduce speed, by pulling the propeller pitch lever back, to reduce power. As the speed reduces, you will need to retrim the aircraft. Activate the landing lights, with a right click on the highlighted switch. The Pucara doesn't have speed brakes, 
so once you reach less than 200 knots, extend the landing gear and its drag will help you reduce speed. At 140 knots, extend the flaps. This will further reduce speed. Retrim the aircraft to keep level attitude. The increased drag of the flaps will force you to add power with the propeller pitch lever. Try to keep a speed of 120 knots through the remainder of the descent. We are at finals now. Reduce speed to 115 knots and use pitch trim to keep the nose level. Just before touchdown, reduce the speed further, to 100 knots, and lift the nose a bit to touch down on the main gear and not the nose wheel. Touchdown. Use the rudder to keep the aircraft aligned with the runway. Wait until the nose wheel comes down, before applying wheel brakes. Press spacebar if you'd like to taxi to the ramp. Press backspace if you prefer to end the mission now. This is Street B. Proceed forward and then slightly left to enter the airport ramp. You are now at the ramp. Park at any spot within the left side of the ramp, but park the aircraft with a U-turn, so that it ends up facing the airport terminal. Good, you have parked your aircraft. The aircraft shutdown is optional, please select. Press spacebar, if you wanted to practice the shutdown procedure. Press backspace, to end the training now.
Congratulations, you have learned and practiced the air to ground strafing procedure on the Pucara, landed back, and taxied to the flight ramp at our home base. The mission has been successfully completed. Press spacebar to exit.